What if a book didn't just tell you how things worked, but instead let you experience it, bringing the content to life as you flip through the pages? And they say that every author puts a piece of themselves into their book, but I might have taken that too literally, because over the last few months, I've poured nearly all of my patience into making this project, fixing issues and printing prototypes. But every mistake and small win became lessons. Lessons that ultimately shaped this book. The idea was simple. A book that demonstrates mechanisms and electronics, designed to spark creativity and offer ideas ready to be applied to other projects. The first page acts as an introduction, showcasing a variety of different mechanisms. After that, we move on to linkages, then gears, before wrapping up with electronics. And I figured every book should have at least some text. So on each page, I'll write a short poem about the topic. I began the design process by focusing on the book's core mechanics, figuring out how to drive the mechanisms on the pages. My solution was using a motorized gear running through the book, with each page having a matching gear to drive its content. The tricky part though, was making sure only one page was active at a time. And that's where this system comes in. This gear is responsible for driving the mechanisms on the pages. But as soon as the page above is closed, a spring-loaded arm flexes back and disconnects the gear chain, stopping all movement on the page when it's no longer visible. With the drive system sorted out, I switched focus to the hinges that hold the book together. I first tried hinges that stuck out from the back, but they didn't really sell the book look, so I decided to integrate them directly into the pages. That made it much neater, and closer to my goal of it resembling an old book. The trade-off is that it can't lie flat, but that was a compromise I was willing to accept to stay true to the vision. I also added a couple of switches. One that turns off the motor when the last page is open, since there won't be any mechanisms to drive on that page. The other cuts power when the book is closed, and automatically turns it back on as soon as you open it, making the experience more immersive. Now that the foundation was set, I could finally get working on the pages. And we're starting with the final page, which is more than just a page. It's the backbone of the entire book, housing all the electronics that bring the book to life. But I didn't want this page to be purely functional. I wanted it to have some life on its own. So I added a circuit that makes LEDs light up in sequence along the wires of the page. The idea was that the blue light will represent the flow of electricity. With everything dialed in, I soldered the circuit onto a small perf board and also connected the remaining components required to run the book. And just like that, page 4 was complete. When I think about linkages, the first thing that comes to my mind are walking mechanisms. I've been fascinated by them since I was a kid, so naturally I wanted to try building one here. But as soon as I started doing the CAD work, I encountered a problem. The pages are only 6mm thick, and with so many links, each part would have to be incredibly thin, way too thin to 3D print. So I kept searching for ideas, tested different mechanisms, even sketched out a few of my own. But every time, the same issue came back. Too many layers stacking up and becoming too thick for the page. Eventually though, I landed on a design inspired by the locking arms of a vault door. It kept the number of stacking links minimal while still being fun to watch. And to fill the remaining space, I paired it with the Roberts linkage, a mechanism that turns rotation into a straight line motion. For the page dedicated to gears, I wanted a mechanism that packed plenty of motion into a tight space, and the planetary gear felt like a good fit. Compact, dynamic, and mesmerizing to watch. I experimented with different gear ratios to see what kind of motion patterns I could create. The goal was to get all the gears moving at different speeds and directions.
the decision came down to what I found the most satisfying. For me, it was this setup. To keep the gears from falling out of the book, I had to angle the gear teeth so that the small planet gears are held in place by the inner and outer gear. They kind of lock themselves in. With the planetary gear nailed down, there was still some space left in the lower right corner, so I added a small gear mechanism that traces the shape of a triangle. On the first page, I wanted to showcase a variety of different mechanisms. And one thing I knew from the start was that I wanted to include a belt drive. So I made that my starting point and proceeded to print it out of TPU. From there, it turned into more of an experiment, adding new elements as I went along. In the end, the page came together with a belt drive, a Geneva mechanism, and a linkage inspired by a watch escapement. With all the pages finished, it was time for the final touches. My print bed has this texture that shows up on the surface of parts, so I oriented the top and bottom covers against it, which gave them this leather-like finish. To push that look even further, I painted them with this leather-brown acrylic. Then. I filled the letters with black paint and sealed everything with a clear satin varnish for a bit of shine and protection. Now, I'm no poet, so I had some help from AI to create short poems, finally bridging the gap between mechanical engineering and poetry. Getting that text onto the 3D printed part was more challenging than I expected. I tried a bunch of methods, like indenting the text, filling it with black paint, and then wiping off the excess. After enough trial and error, I realized I just needed to pick one method and move on. Otherwise, I'd never get this book finished. The solution I landed on was printing the text directly into the parts. So I offset the letters 0.2mm so that the slicer would treat them as separate surfaces. That way, even though the text was slightly recessed, the ley lines would still come out on top. The font Futura at 3.8mm size worked especially well, since its stroke width almost perfectly matched that of a filament line. While not flawless, it gave the neatest result out of everything I tried. Seeing it together like this makes me forget all the times I thought it might not work. But honestly, I had a great time making it. Just the right amount of mechanical headaches to keep me on my toes, but still keeping it enjoyable. In the end, I managed to fit about 70 3D printed parts, plus all the electronics and hardware, into something that still kind of looks like an old book. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Bye.